Not because of who we are or what we have done. It's all by His grace. I bet if you and me were given the task to prepare the lineage, ancestry, of the Messiah we would have chosen only, holy, people to be the grandparents of Jesus Christ. I'm sure we would have made sure that every woman that was going to be in the ancestry of Jesus was married a virgin, was impeccable in character and came from righteous parents. But truly, the ways of the Lord are not like those of men and so are his thoughts. Let's see what God did when he was planning the lineage of the King of Kings, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Word and human flesh. There was a man named Judah son of Jacob. Judah, had a son named Ur. So Ur married this woman called Tamar. We hear that Ur was wicked and God killed him. Yep, just like that. Ur was gone. So his brother Onan married Tamar according to Jewish custom so that he can give her children and continue his brother's name. While Onan was sleeping with Tamar and he felt that his seed was coming, he pulled out and spilled his seed to the ground because he didn't want to give Tamar children. This thing made God angry and God killed him too. So now Judah realized that I have lost two sons to this woman. And now I am left with my young boy. So he said to Tamar, please wait for this boy to grow up so that when he's old, he can be your husband, but when the boy was grown, Judah decided, I'm not going to have this boy killed too, so he gave him a different woman to marry. This thing made Tamar very upset and so she planned a comeback. Every year Judah would go to this certain place to shear his sheep. When time came he went on his way to shear sheep as usual. Tamar then dressed up like a prostitute, I really don't know how prostitutes dressed in those days, but yeah, she put on some prostitute clothes and waited for Judah. When Judah saw her, he said, wow, wow, check that woman, I am going to buy her services. So yep, this trade didn't start now. It started a long time ago. So Judah slept with Tamar and said to her, I have nothing to pay you with right now but will pay you later. Tamar agreed on condition that he gave her his staff as security that he will honor his part of the deal and get back his staff. So Judah went and got a small goat which was meant to be her payment. Judah came back with the pay, and looked everywhere for the prostitute but never found her. He forgot all about it. In Jewish custom, a staff had your name written on it and your signet signature. So Tamar as fate would have it, fell pregnant from her father-in-law. After a couple of months her tummy started to show. So people went to Judah and complained that Tamar is pregnant, Judah was very angry and wanted her stoned. So then it was the perfect moment for Tamar, she brought the staff and said the man who made me pregnant is the owner of this staff. And when people looked they realized it was Judah's staff. Now because it was Judah's staff the talk of stoning just quieted down. Isn't it strange that the punishment for sin was applied depending on who did it? Tamar was going to be stoned but now that Judah turned out to be responsible for her pregnancy the narrative changes and all is well. Judah said, this woman has been more righteous than myself. Can you imagine, a woman who pretended to be a prostitute, slept with her father-in-law and got pregnant is more righteous. Tamar gave birth to twins Perez and Zerah and guess what? God chose Perez to be the grandfather of King David. Imagine. What does this do to a religious mind? A child born out of adultery, out of prostitution and God chooses that child to be the great grandfather of Jesus. What does this do to our poor hopeless religious minds where we think we can attain perfection by the working of the flesh? When Joshua was about to take over Jericho, he sent twelve spies to check out the land. The spies arrived at a house of a prostitute named Rahab. Rahab hid these guys in the roof. The men from the city went to her house to check out the spies but a prostitute hid them very nicely. So, when the spies went back to Joshua they told him what a mighty blessing the prostitute had been to them and hid them. So Joshua said, the whole of Jericho will be destroyed, only Rahab and her house will be saved. Well, indeed God overthrew Jericho. A man by the name of Salmon married Rahab. Salmon was the great-grandson of Perez. 
Guess who was the son of Rahab and Salmon? You guess right. Boaz. The mighty Boaz. The grandfather of Jesse who was the father of David. Listen to this, God chose a harlot from Jericho to be the great-grandmother of Jesus. Who would have thought? Now listen to this. There was famine in the land of Israel and a man named Elimelech took his wife Naomi to go find greener pastures in the land of Moab. They left with their two boys. So the boys got to Moab and married Moabite women. Now if you don't know who Moab was. Ish this one is a bit hard but since it is in the Bible, God wants everyone to know about it. When Lot ran away from Sodom, his wife became a pillar of salt, so she never made it out, but he left with his two daughters. The daughters of Lot decided they wanted to get pregnant and I imagine they thought the whole world had been destroyed together with Sodom and Gomorrah and so the only man available was their father. They got him drunk and slept with him. Ish, and you thought this thing of spiking drinks was a new thing. There is nothing new under the sun. So those girls did exactly that. In English we call it incest, when a father has sexual relations with his daughter. Yep, that's how Moab came into existence. So, Elimelech's children married Moabite women. Orpah and Ruth. And after about ten years both sons died having not got any children. So now Orpah and Ruth remained with their mother-in-law, Naomi. Naomi heard that in Israel things were now better and so she planned to go back to Israel. Orpah stayed behind, but Ruth said I will go with you wherever you go and nothing can separate her from her mother-in-law. So as we know the story, Ruth the Moabite married Boaz the son of Perez, who was the son of a harlot. Now here we have a unique mixture of incest and prostitution. The son of Ruth and Boaz is Obed, the son of Obed is Jesse, the son of Jesse is King David. Jesus Christ is known as at the son of David. The entire lineage from David to Jesus is listed in Matthew's chapter 1. I just wrote this to show you something. You see, even at the times of the law, God's sovereign grace was there. When I read the Bible I see grace before the antediluvian floods, floods of Noah. I see grace before the law and after the law. I see grace in the new covenant and I see grace right until the very end. If you look at your life, you will see the grace of God before you were born again, after you got born again and the same grace of the Lord will extend on until the second coming of the Lord. Not because we are any better or righteous, but as Romans 5, 8 says, but God commendeth his love toward us, in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Take a moment today and thank God for his grace that you never worked for. Some of us should have been in jail, some of us should be dead, some of us should have been in mental institutions but mercy rewrote our lives. Never let anyone make you feel unworthy because you failed to attain bodily perfection, or because along the way you slipped and fell. Rise up and sin no more. The same God that chose Rahab, Tamar and Ruth says do not look at yourself, look at me and because I live, you live also. May Jesus Christ bless you and may those who are seeking him find him now. Amen and Amen. <coughs> Don't be lured into idolatry or attract judgment upon yourself. Thank God for the doctors, nurses and everyone in the forefront of what's going on and pray for them but don't look up on them or focus your praises on any human being. Flesh and blood can do nothing without the breath of life, spirit of God, quickening our bodies. If you are a healthcare worker, kindly don't encourage anybody to look up on you but rather utilize these opportunities to point people to our Lord Jesus Christ. Acts 12 21-23 and upon a set day Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne, and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a god, and not of a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him, because he gave not God the glory, and he was eaten of worms, and gave up the ghost.